I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. I did not just graduate from grad school and then leap into theater job after theater job after theater job, which eventually led me to Broadway. That is the overarching story, but trinkled in and sprinkled in between that story are a host of survival jobs. My name is Adrienne Walker and I am a Broadway performer. I want to share with you what I've learned about the business so far. Welcome to 32 Bar Cut. So a survival job in my definition of it is a job that someone works that is not in line with their ultimate career goal, but it pays the bills. Hence the, the phrase survival job. And I worked many, many survival jobs in Chicago. If you're unfamiliar with the city, Chicago is uh, an amazing city when it comes to theater. It's got a huge theater community. It's rich. You can work all sorts of jobs from storefront theater to big houses um, to renowned houses. You can, you, it runs the gamut in Chicago. But um, the cost of living also runs the gamut. You can get a super cheap apartment shared with roommates for like 300 a month in Pilsen, or you can be living in the loop uh, for 2100 for one bedroom. It's, it's really up to you and your budget and what you can survive on which is great too because New York really isn't structured like that like New York is just expensive so Chicago is a great city to start working in theater I will say that um, but you still will need to work survival jobs because not only does the rent market run the gamut so does the pay when you work these storefront theaters which might pay you $90 a week or like $300 for the whole gig to a theater like Paramount, which might be paying you $800 a week or $1,000 a week, you know. Or if you're a New York, New York actor flying in and working at Paramount, they put you up and I don't know how much they make, but they make a lot more than the folks who live in Chicago make at theaters like that. Um, so that's just, you know, I just want to be transparent with this video and let you know. So when I got my first job, as a, a musical theater actor, it was at Court Theater in Hyde Park. Um, and they were paying me a pretty decent wage, but I was still non-equity, so it wasn't quite going to tide me over. So I had to hang on to a, a, a hostess job that I was working at the time uh, while I was still in grad school. So it kind of overlapped a bit that I was working the hostess job during grad school, and then I went right into Porgy and Bess. And because I had been working this hostess job for about a year, they understood that I was an actor and they were really cool about it and they let me kind of take a leave of absence and the other two hostess uh, kind of uh, juggled the schedule while I was gone. And then when I finished my contract at Porgy and Bess, I was able to go back to work. That doesn't always happen, but I think that if you are very transparent and very honest during your interview with any of these uh, bosses that hire people for these survival jobs, then they may be able to work with you when you do book a show and you need to take a bit of a leave of absence or maybe just work one day a week instead of five. So that's that was my experience in Chicago. That happened for me a lot. I was able to just bounce from survival job to survival job as long as I let them know up front, hey, my end goal is to be an actor, but in the meantime, I'm gonna be a great employee for you I just need you to know that there will be times that I need you to be flexible with me in my schedule. And that seemed to work out for me. Um, so after I worked that hostess job, I, I worked a job as a server um, at this little restaurant called Johnny Brown Bag in Andersonville in, um, in Chicago. And that job worked for me because I, there were a lot of other employees there and so we were able to cover each other's shifts and it was flexible and I only worked from like 11 to 3.30 so I was able to go to my evening shows if that ever came up. Um, another survival job that I worked was at Starbucks and this one was a bit tricky because my schedule that I requested was the morning schedule and I requested the morning schedule for obvious reasons so that I could have the rest of the day to audition. I was with an agent at that time and they were constantly putting me on last minute commercial auditions so I always had to be ready and I, I, I wanted the day to myself to, to be free to do whatever I needed to you know, put in the work for this major career goal that I had to be, a, you know, a performer, an actor. And so um, 
my shift at Starbucks was from 5 a.m until sometimes 9 30 sometimes 10 30 sometimes 11 but that was about the block of time that i worked and i worked about three to four shifts a week i was a part-time employee so it needed to be under 35 hours um i can't remember my salary right now but i think it was like maybe 8 25 or something like that at starbucks so it wasn't paying a lot but it does add up when you are consistent um it was also helpful that there were other actors in that uh, Starbucks location. And so we all understood that we had main goals that were bigger than Starbucks. And our boss understood that as well. She's very lovely and understood that as well. Um, but I was burnt out trying to work this early morning schedule and do tech week. And so there was a time where I got into a small car accident because I was just sleep deprived. I was waking up at 4.30, working my Starbucks shift, walking down the street to my carpool for, um, for a production I was doing at Paramount Theater, which is in Aurora, so there's a bit of a commute there. I would walk down the street, I'd meet my carpool after my shift at Starbucks, do a tech week, a 12 out of 12, or a 10 out of 12, um, over in Aurora and then we would drive back. I'd hit the sheets maybe at about 12 a.m., wake up and do it all over again. And one morning after having done that three nights in a row, I forgot to put my glasses on <laughs> and I hopped in the car and I got into a small accident. And that was um, that was kind of like the, 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 the lightning bulb or the, the moment where I realized I was really burning myself out. So I spoke to my boss at Starbucks and she gave me a leave of absence and I was able to finish my production at Paramount and then gradually get worked back into the schedule at Starbucks. But when you're working these survival jobs, you just have to keep in mind that your end goal is to be uh, a performer, a working actor. And so if, you're, if your survival job is ever coming into to direct conflict with that end goal, it's time to take a beat, take a second, and reevaluate and figure out how you can make it all work. And if you can't make it all work, then just remember that your end goal is what matters. Yes, you gotta pay your bills, so if you're in a position where you gotta put that survival job first, then do it. I've been in that position before, too. Um, I worked for very briefly, and I was terrible at it, as a, 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 a gym, attendant for LA Fitness and it was for my friend BA. He was the manager there and he hired me and I'm so sorry BA, I was such a terrible employee. Um, but I did that job off and on. And it was just extra money here and there always mattered at the, at the end of the month when you had to get your rent ready and together. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, I worked as one of the first Instacart drivers. Uh, before Instacart was big, you know, pre-pandemic, pre, pre uh, really Uber and Lyft being on the map like it is now, there was no DoorDash, there was no Uber Eats, nothing like that. Um, a friend told me about this really flexible job. So I went to the orientation. I was like, oh yeah, I can do this. So I borrowed Austin's car and uh, for a few hours every day, I would just log on and say, hey, I'm available from two to six to uh to drive for uber i mean to drive for instacart and so i would uh log on and then i would basically how the app works is you log on you say when you're available and then people start ordering groceries and you just get uh a, an order and you go to the grocery store they've asked for whether it be jewel osco or mariano's or whole foods you shop for them and you deliver it to their door i'm sure everyone knows about instacart now um, and that job was very flexible and it really worked for me. Um, the tips were great for the most part. The only frustrating thing was that um, sometimes the orders were super huge and I, you know, only have, you know, two arms. So I would have to go in and out of their apartment quite a bit to get the orders to them. Other times people were lived downtown and there wasn't a lot of parking. So I had to find a place to park safely, run up, deliver their groceries and come back down and hope that I didn't have a ticket on my car or a boot or toad, you know. Um, and I think those are the jobs that I really wanted to share with you because I found that serving, um, I found that being a barista and, uh, you know, Instacart 
any kind of job where you could just hop on and log on and say what your hours were as an independent contractor those were the best flexible jobs for me when i was living in chicago um but i was still busting my butt and i was always grateful whenever i booked a commercial or anything that gave me like a really fat check that i could live off of or catch up um if my bills were getting behind because I was pretty broke in Chicago. If you've seen some of my other videos, I talk about my parents helping me out with buying a ticket to get an audition in New York and everything because I really didn't have any disposable income, but I was willing to make those sacrifices and to work these jobs that I was overqualified for. I had a graduate degree and here I am delivering groceries or um, serving lattes because my end goal was to be a professional performer and that's just some of the sacrifices that you're going to have to take if you want if you really want this and you aren't blessed with an endowment or an inheritance or rich parents that can take care of you um, or if you didn't do a startup when you were like 20 and now you're like a secret millionaire if you don't have those blessings and you are fighting on your own to get to the top you know, I, I commend you because I understand exactly what that journey looks like. And I understand going to the grocery store and only having, you know, a few dollars and maybe your dinner that night is zucchini and potatoes. And, you know, it's just the way it is. Um, but that's, I want to be, I want to let you guys know that that's what my life looked like in Chicago. But it was also amazing it too you know like i had amazing friends i had a good time i had an amazing partner in austin and we lived a really fun artistic enjoyable life but we were just broke um and it was really cool to to experience that it was really cool to live all these jobs i know how to make a latte if i ever book a job as a barista i i don't have to you know pretend like i know what i'm doing i know what i'm doing uh, i did my first really cool commercial was with mcdonald's if i can find it i'll drop it in here but it was a mcdonald's spot that ended up uh, airing on the super bowl and we had to immerse ourselves in a real mcdonald's and interact with real customers and get them to pay with something other than than currency so the currency was a hug or calling your mom and giving her a compliment or telling your children you love them or something like that we had we it was called pay with love campaign or pay with loving campaign and um so because I had so much experience in customer service and sitting behind a cash register and interacting with people, I enjoyed that commercial shoot. Yes, it was long. We were shooting for, I think, ooh, I want to say about 14 hours. And it was right after I closed a show the night before. But that's it bees like that sometimes. Like that is like how it works. When it rains, it pours. And I felt comfortable improving and 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 being a real person during this commercial because that had been most of my life in Chicago, interacting with customers and trying to be friendly and everything like that. So um, survival jobs are what's up and they will pay your bills and you will learn a lot of life experience that you hopefully will be able to take onto the stage with you or whatever your medium of artistic love is. Um, and so tomorrow is Giving Tuesday. And in light of us talking about survival jobs and money and actors and everything, if you have a charity that you're already uh, planning on giving to, that's amazing. But if you're still on the fence or not sure if you want to give, um, might I suggest that you make a donation to the Actors Fund. The Actors Fund is an amazing organization that is not just for actors, even though it's called the Actors Fund. They help support so many people in the arts in the staged arts community whether it be someone in stage management or a musician or an usher or someone on the crew they help people in the arts and they have been swamped with need this season because of the pandemic and because so many of us are out of work and not only are at are not only are people in this community out of work some of them may be facing some health crisis as well and so they rely on organizations like the Actors Fund. So if you have a little extra cash in your account and you are willing to give, might I suggest that you make a donation to the Actors Fund and I'll drop their link down below. 
And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you next time. Thank you.